Sling and things. Sup, and welcome to episode 11 of Sling and Things, where today I am discussing a video game. It's the first time I'm reviewing a game on here, and for the occasion, I'm going to switch things up a little bit, and I'll tell you why. This Spider-Man footage that you're staring at right now, with your eyes, is usually far enough removed from what I'm reviewing that it's not that difficult to separate it from the subject of the review. But that isn't quite the case when I'm discussing another video game. That's where it can be a little tricky, which is why, once I get through this intro, I'm just going to show you gameplay footage of the game that I'm reviewing, while still retaining this tiny little inkling of web-slinging at the top of this video, so that this review can still fall under the slinging things umbrella. Cool? Cool. Okay, so today, I am reviewing one of the most unique video games to come out in the year 2019. It was a highly anticipated game, Death Stranding for the PlayStation 4, which starred Norman Reedus as the main character, Sam Porter Bridges, and which was the first game published by Kojima Productions since they split from Konami, who they had previously worked with to create the Metal Gear Solid franchise. So yeah, this is Death Stranding. This is a very weird game. It's so weird that it's hard to give a summary of it, without coming off like a raving lunatic, but I'm gonna try. In this game, you are a delivery man, portrayed and voiced by Norman Reedus of Walking Dead fame, and your job is to take supplies from one outpost to another, and you're doing this in a post-apocalyptic version of America, where America basically doesn't exist anymore, and there are almost no people, but you're doing it anyway. And your suit is powered by a baby, that lives in a glass tube, and that whines and cries every time you're in danger, and your biggest obstacles are these invisible monsters called BTs that are like the remnants of dead people who haven't passed on yet, and they're all over the place. And if you die, you come back to life because you have this thing called dooms, and also the baby shows up in your body and gives you a thumbs up after you've reconnected with your soul in the spirit realm, I think. Um... Also, you can pee and poop in this game. You can pee right out in the open. You can whip your dick out. And if you pee and poop in the toilet, like you're supposed to, you can create grenades out of your waist. You can also make grenades out of the bath water every time you shower. Also, your sister is like a ghost who is connected to these ethereal, magical beaches in this universe. And some people have magical powers and can teleport and summon monsters, but just some of them can. Um, also, Monster Energy Drink is still being factory produced in this timeline, and you drink cans of Monster in this game. So there's really blatant product placement in Death Stranding, which I know a lot of people are fine with. I know a lot of people are just used to this and you shrug it off. But, man, it's pretty ridiculous that one of the best ways to replenish yourself in this game is to consume a real-life product that somehow survived the apocalypse into the distant future even though everything else in the country has been destroyed. America is gone, civilization is gone, but this energy drink? Totally unaffected by the destruction of all mankind. Mm-hmm. The game also breaks the fourth wall quite a bit, and one of the big side characters is modeled after Guillermo del Toro, although I caught on very quickly that he wasn't doing the voice because his character speaks a lot in this game. At one point, even Conan O'Brien makes an appearance and gives you a hat. You get your orders from a man named Die Hard Man, who wears a Doctor Doom mask, naturally, and all the other main characters have names like Dead Man and Heart Man and Mama. And in case you're wondering, the game goes to elaborate lengths to explain how each one of them got their names, and yes, it turns out that their names are all extremely literal. Uh, what else? Oh, your mom is the President of the United States. So yeah, there's a lot going on in this story, and I'd be lying if I didn't say that a lot of this just went way over my head. Death Stranding is one of those stories that you have to, like, commit to, to fully understand. It's like homework. The lore of this world is a constant, never-ending download of information, and a lot of it never made logical sense to me. It always came off to me that if the game wasn't specifically leading me by the hand to tell me what was happening, I never would have known what was happening, because... There's a lot being thrown at you, and some of it doesn't mean anything. Some of it is just there for the sake of being there. 
That said, a lot of the stuff that happens in the story is undeniably cool and looks amazing, and there is absolutely enough to latch onto here on an emotional level, even if you don't necessarily understand what the hell is going on at all times. Which is a good thing, because there was rarely a cutscene in this game that I watched without feeling totally lost through a lot of it. What's funny, though, is that as complex and heavy as the story is, the gameplay, for the most part, is actually pretty straightforward. Almost every mission in Death Stranding is a FedEx quest, in which you're given a bunch of packages and you have to deliver them all to someone on the other end of the map, and you have to make sure that the packages don't incur enough damage or else you'll fail your mission. There's combat later on in the game, but in the beginning, you're just walking to destinations with a bunch of crap on your back, and that's the game in the beginning. What Death Stranding does, though, that is pretty unique, is that it has a very realistic sense of weight to it. In this game, when Sam is close to being over-encumbered, he can barely move, and he's in constant risk of tipping over and ruining the packages. Whereas when he's carrying nothing, he can run and jump, and his movement isn't hindered at all. And that's pretty creative, because normally in video games, you're given an inventory allotment that doesn't affect your weight at all, until you go over it. And that's even if you can go over it, which in many games you can't. In this game though, every time you add or lose a crate to your back, you absolutely feel it. This game does an excellent job of making 20 pounds feel like 20 pounds, feel real. And I love that the way Sam walks changes depending on how much he's carrying, and that certain tasks like going down a slippery hill become that much more treacherous, depending on how hard it is for him to keep his sense of balance. Now, you might be wondering, okay, yeah, 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 but is this fun? Is Death Stranding enjoyable? And my answer to that is, eh, yeah, kinda, eventually. In the first five hours of this game, you're just walking, and... I was not into the first five hours of this game at all. I found it repetitive, I found it frustrating. There was a moment, too, where I was walking up a mountainside, and I slipped and stumbled, and all of my cargo fell to the ground, and then the baby started crying. And so I'm gathering up all this cargo while there's a screaming baby right in my face, and I remember thinking, why am I playing this? There is nothing about this that I like. This is terrible. And what changed the game for me was that around the five hour mark, you get a vehicle, you get a bike that you can ride. And once the game started introducing bikes, that's when I started to like Death Stranding, because it is fun to go from point A to point B on one of these future bikes, and to try to traverse a mountainside on it when it probably shouldn't be attempted to begin with. This speaks to the biggest problem with this game though, which is that there is not enough diversity in the delivery missions. Because those crates you deliver are basically identical looking, and because the people you're delivering to all have the same spiel going on, it feels like you're doing the same thing over and over and over again throughout the entire game, and it gets monotonous after a while. A lot of these missions aren't difficult so much as they're time consuming. Even when you get the bikes, you will inevitably run into a situation where the only way you can get somewhere is to do it on foot. And because this game doesn't have a convenient fast travel system, way too much of this game is just you retracing your steps on foot and going back and forth from one end of the map to the other. A lot of the tasks in this game are tedious, and that's disappointing because there is so much imagination and creativity in this game, and yet the settings themselves are kind of generic and interchangeable to a large degree. To me, this game is at its best when the environment comes into play, when it becomes a challenge to get your 100 pounds of cargo over a mountaintop or over a river, and it makes you think. It makes you go, okay, how do I go up this cliff with 100 pounds of stuff attached to my back? Death Stranding works well when it's almost like a puzzle game, but too often, the environment isn't testing you mentally as much as it's forcing you to choose a route that just takes a while. And I think if the environments had been designed in a way so that each path required a different approach, a different strategy or mindset, I think this game would have been better. But instead, the delivery missions all blend together after a while, and some of them aren't fun so much as they're a thing to do. That said, 
you're not always delivering stuff in this game. Sometimes you're fighting monsters. Sometimes you're battling against bad guys. And those missions are fun. And I love that Hideo Kojima was willing to, on a dime, change what this game is about. I won't spoil anything, but there comes a point when Death Stranding becomes a completely different game, and your mission changes entirely, and that's awesome, and that's the real selling point of this game, in my opinion. The delivery missions are what they are, but the monster fights, when you square off against these mutant squid-looking things, and when school buses and cars and buildings emerge from this black abyss, and when engineers from Prometheus are throwing boxes at you from what it looks like, that is cool. That is something, needless to say, that you don't get to do in most video games. And I love that this game provided a chance to do that. The other thing that I will say about this game is that as confusing as it is at times, Death Stranding is nothing if not interesting, and some of its themes and morals are worth analyzing. For example, by total coincidence, I finished playing this game at around the start of the 2020 coronavirus pandemic, and Death Stranding was weirdly prescient about what it was like to live in isolation and to self-quarantine during a pandemic because this game is all about how the survivors don't go outside and are afraid of an invisible enemy. In fact, in this game, you're supposed to hold your breath every time you're near a monster so that they won't detect you, and during the coronavirus pandemic, a lot of people were literally holding their breath every time they passed someone on the street out of fear that they would get the virus, which is kind of remarkable that this game could actually be relatable in that sense. And to be clear, not everything in Death Stranding has a deep meaning. There is a lot of superficial junk in here too. This is a game, again, that has you consuming monster energy drink in the midst of battles. But if you play Death Stranding, I think you will also come away appreciating that there is a vision here, and that beneath all this weirdness and craziness is a story that is maybe a bit more applicable to our lives than we'd like to admit. Keep on keeping on. All of which is to say that I found myself liking Death Stranding in the end. It was a bit of a roller coaster to get to that realization, because again, I was not into this game at first, but I got there. I don't think I could describe this as great, because as well designed as it is, the delivery missions are often flawed, and they are what make up the majority of this game. But, there's still a lot to like here, and I'm willing to grade this game on a curve because I admire that Kojima was willing to make a game like this in the first place. I think it's awesome because if you, viewer, if you ever try to create your own fictional universe, there will come a point in the process where you will discover a plot hole, and you will probably go, damn, now I need to stop everything and recalibrate the story so that I can make sense of this one area of the mythos that I haven't accounted for. And a lot of people get hung up on stuff like that, and it keeps them from ever creating anything. And what's great about Kojima is that he was like, screw it, I don't care how confusing this is, or if some of this doesn't make sense, I am going to make my weird walking simulator baby game that features Guillermo del Toro and Conan O'Brien, and it's going to have 15 minute long cutscenes and flashbacks, and it's going to play songs when you approach your destination, and you're going to hear a lot of nursery rhymes for some reason, and it's going to be cool. I like that this weird game exists. If every game was like Death Stranding, I probably wouldn't like it, I would probably get tired of it, but as a one-off, I think this is worth playing, even with all the pitfalls that I think it has. I am willing to cut a game some slack if it's unique, and if there's one thing you have to give Death Stranding, it's that it's different. And speaking of different...